absolutely stunning sound there of a 3.9 litre naturally aspirated V12 manual as well. Central driving position, as you can see, Dario sat in the middle there. Uh, you can see the, the wing mirrors as well are actually cameras. So you'll see screens uh, to the left and right of Dario's seating position, which are the rear view cameras. Um, no rear view mirror in the middle of a three seater, because of course you'd be looking at yourself. So uh, right, no some people quite like doing that. But, uh, <laughs> What a sound. It sounds Halloween is approaching. That sounds like a sort of banshee wail that would scare the children. But uh, wow, I really, it's the first time I've got a chance to see the car, that tiny little fin on top of the fan at the back. But I love the way that Dario was just describing it's to stop the aggressive diffuser at the back. Yes, it stopped the uh, diffuser from stalling at low speeds. So in effect, that means that you have a, a very constant, consistent level of downforce, even at low speed where you don't have the airflow flowing under the car so that means you have the same level of downforce at 30 miles an hour as you have at 130 miles an hour which is will i'm sure mean fantastic handling and incredible traction out of the corners as well well it doesn't need to say supercar on the tin the xp5 from gordon it is a total supercar and i really really love that central driving position the fact you could have two very lucky or maybe slightly scared people sitting just slightly behind you on both sides of course we saw that with the mclaren f1 but i, I still think it's got absolutely got legs yes it has some interesting features here you can see how big the rear diffuser is now because you can actually see the drive shafts turning which pass through the diffuser just to see how far forward the uh, the, the diffuser starts side saddles on this as well just like the mclaren f1 had so you have luggage space either side of you i had a look at this car in the paddock and i would recommend ladies and gentlemen if you get a chance to get across here go and have a look because the packaging is exquisite how do you package a naturally aspirate aspirated sorry v12 with that fan system in such a small car that weighs under a ton is is quite amazing yeah so if it's your first sight of this car i think you'll remember the t50 principally for its sound because it's something very very special you know a lot of people hark back to the days when we had the v10s in formula one the last really harsh sounding engine note but to me this is super super special yes was it 11,200 or 10,200 RPM he said it revved to? Something in unbelievable, really. Uh, bespoke built, Cosworth built engine in this car. Again, you can see, as I, I call it, you can see it's a lot of Gordon Murray's greatest hits with the fan at the back, uh, the, uh, the windows. Do you know why the window only uh, opens and closes a little amount there? You can see that there. It's only the bottom half. Uh, is that because you can put your chains through at the top? Probably is, yes, but also it's when the door is so sculpted that the glass can't go down all the way inside the door. So you, you can't open the window all the way, hence why you've got the slightly smaller windows. Goal wing doors as well as you'd, as you'd, as you'd expect on a car like this. Again, uh, you can see that uh, reference back to the McLaren F1. And the other thing that's exciting, and we, we, it's not running on track here, but it is in the paddock, is that there is going to be a track-only version of this car called the T50 Louder, L-A-U-D-A, not L-A-O-D-E-R. So again, an homage to the great Nicky Louder, and I think a track version of this car is going to be phenomenally special. Yeah, I saw that sitting in the paddock. It was, uh, you know, you walk, cars are being looked at all around the paddock, but it was like bees to a, a honey pot there as that, that sat down there. It was uh, just something to draw the eye. And as you say, the packaging is exquisite. Good news is this uh, Gordon Auto Murray Automotive display comes towards an end. Is it getting a little bit brighter out there? The track continues to dry off this really unexpectedly wet morning. And I think from Dario Franchitti's point of view, that was probably a good thing because yes. uh, it will be wet in Scotland where he goes to drive it, but uh, it was horribly wet earlier on today. But Dario's not smiling yet. He's concentrating quite hard, but uh, I think this time around, he is he doing one further lap, one more chance to we'll get one more sound. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> banging, accelerating, beautiful sound. And I'm sure Dario doesn't want to give it up. He can't wait until his no. car's delivered, so he's got to make two, and where better to do it than here at Goodwood? And he's actually, you know, carrying a good pace through Magic, that double apex, first corner. And again, I mean, it is the Brabham fan car from uh, the Swedish Grand Prix. It is indeed. I, lo I love that, but it's got a modern purpose this time around. Yes, it does. And uh, unlike uh, in, in Formula 1, it can't be, uh, can't be banned after a race, which is, which is good. Unfortunately, the, the, the original Brabham fan car uh, what was banned after one race, wasn't it? Well, well I, I think if you, you look at the history, the concept that it was banned, it, it, it was withdrawn after uh, one race, so right. it couldn't be protested. But uh, Nicky Lauda said thank you very much, and that's why his name is going to be on the tail of the, the race or the track version of this.
great days, 1978. And good, we've got some of the drivers from that Royal pre-season competing here this weekend. We've got John Watson, who's in the Jaguar display. We've got uh, Jochen Mass, who's in everything. And uh, it's great to have them on board. I can definitely see what can only be described as a shadow under that car, which means that the sun must be out, which is fantastic to see. And the, the car looking lovely in the sunlight out the back of the circuit as uh, Dario turns it nice and neat and tidily through uh, onto the Lavant straight taking it nice and steady not an easy car to drive in these conditions Bruce not much weight and a lot of power yeah we certainly and it won't be as set up as softly as some of the Ford Falcons that managed to master the, the water covered circuit and keeping uh, the aquaplaning down to a minimum but uh, as the McLaren safety car brings it around the 720s following hot on its heels but to me the sound of the meeting so far that wail of the 3.9 litre engine in the back and uh, the fan obviously doing its work around the circuit but uh, first sight for many and who knows in the history of supercars will this be right in the pantheon but i think it's got very very good credentials and i'm looking forward to seeing it again later this weekend we'll see it again tomorrow when hopefully be on a full dry track and you know what dario's not giving it up he's going for another lap going around again Yes, treating the throttle with respect is how I'd describe that, quite, uh, quite understandably in these conditions. But the chequered flag is now out, so I think that was the last time we'll see the car over the finishing straight. Uh, we'll have one more lap, so ladies and gentlemen, if you're out and about on the banks around the track, do enjoy this incredible car on, on full song driven by uh, an incredible driver. Absolutely so, and uh, always with the Franchitti family, staunch supporters of Goodwood, because uh, there's no way that Dario and Marino weren't born in this world, uh, brought up in this world without uh, the full induction into the world of motor racing. Their father, George, used to compete and uh, just had the love, the sort of Italian love of motor racing, and it's been passed down. They know the history, they care about it. But both Marino and Dario looking to the future, looking to supercar projects and really loving to pass their knowledge on. And I think for Dario, this is particularly exciting to be involved in the construction of a and the, and the concept of a supercar along with Gordon Murray. You know, that is a really, really special place to be. It is. And as, as we heard earlier, he's he's put his money where his mouth is, uh, so to speak, and he is buying one himself. Uh, but yes, I think. To, to be able to be involved in yeah the, the concept the, the fine tuning and, and really to put your stamp on a car must just be an incredible feeling and to see it now in the flesh for people to to enjoy must be a very proud moment well we've been talking about the engine notes Billy but of course as cars will increasingly be going of electric and hybrid uh, technology these could be the last of the great whalers and I think that will give them a real space in uh, the future history Yes, it will indeed, and I think that's how they've achieved the, the packaging and, and the lightweight is, is that it is naturally aspirated and it is um, not hybridised, so you do save a lot of space there. It's a big challenge, and I don't know if the, uh, the fan concept would maybe work without that space uh, to, to have the fan back in there. But no, you do have to go and have a look at this car. In the